Welcome to the Swift ALM 2.0 webinar. Uh, I'm Bhavesh from the Swift ALM product management. Today I'll be demoing you the new UI UX of the Swift ALM application. So the webinar will greatly benefit those who haven't upgraded to our new UI UX version yet or are not aware of the scope of improvements which are part of it. It will also help all uh, help our early adopters to gain more insight into the spectrum of the enhancements uh, which we have been offering as part of this uh, new version. So uh, before we get started, we would like to confirm that the webinar will be recorded and shared post the webinar. Also the questions will be taken via the Q&A box on the right hand side of your screen. So please enter your questions anytime uh, during the webinar so that we can take up those at the end. Okay, so today's agenda, uh, like I said, is to demonstrate all the uh, new UI UX of the Swift ALM application. So the high level vision uh, behind these changes uh, was to update Swift ALM uh, with, a, with new front end components that provide more consistency uh, with your user experience. Uh, so what I'll be doing today is to illustrate the benefits of the new UI UX of the Swift ALM application. I'll give you a glimpse of the older version which we had and uh, show you uh, how it has completely changed in the, uh, in the new version. So uh, the focus has been to uh, change the look and feel and the interaction of the application to make it more intuitive and uh, also you will notice that it uh, now looks more clean, spacious and modern. Uh, we have also redesigned uh, uh, our navigation, uh, done a lot of changes uh, as part of the dashboard module. Uh, so this is done uh, keeping in mind that we want to start introducing new and new uh, chart types uh, in our uh, upcoming releases. So uh, the dashboard module has been completely revamped there and uh, we will also be showing you uh, of the new mobile app which uh, essentially is an extension to the Swift ALM application so you will have the uh, same uh, approach of using the Swift ALM app as well. So what I'll do is I'll switch uh, to the application and start uh, showcasing the changes. So as you can notice, uh, this has uh, this is the uh, older version of the application. Um, you will uh, see that uh, there are a lot of fields. Uh, there's a lot of information to be seen here, but uh, at the same time, it it becomes a tad bit difficult for the end user to focus on the things that really matter. Uh, so for example, if you look at this defect uh, e form, you will see that uh, a lot of uh, space has been used. Sorry for that. So uh, you notice that a lot of space has been used uh, by the left navigation and uh, even if I uh, dock it, uh, the rest of the fields uh, which are there on the defect form that pretty much occupy the space on the application. So even though we have just two columns of uh, uh, field labels and uh, back, uh, input values themselves, it's pretty much taking up all the space and uh, there is a lot of information that has been shown to the end user which is uh, going to be hard to read through uh, if one has to really uh, focus on some of the things. So um, even if I say let's go to the project profile page here, So even in this case, you will notice that there are a lot of fields and you are uh, struggle, you would struggle to read through the exact label on the left hand side and the actual value uh, seen on the uh, field. So what we have done as part of the Swift ALM application is that we have completely changed the way you look uh, at all these field values. So the moment you have 
uh, uh, e-form in front of your or any of uh, the application pages, you notice that it has a center page design. So uh, a lot of space was getting uh, utilized unnecessarily even though the information being shown was not that much. So uh, what we have done is uh, we have changed the way uh, the information is getting laid out. So you will see this center page design where uh, we have a left space and right space and at the same time the readability has improved drastically because all the field values stand out much better than what you would uh, see in the earlier versions. So it's much easier for me to read through the values and the field values uh, if, uh, whichever are being shown on the screen and uh, they are very well spaced out so uh, obviously that will uh, mean that you will get a scroll but that also improves on the readability of the uh, e-form field values so that's uh, the first big change which you'll notice uh, once you are on the new UI version of uh, the SuperLM application uh, reading through a, a lot of information uh, no matter how it has been configured uh, as per your business needs it will still be very very easy to read through it. Uh, the second big change which you will notice as part of, uh, of this redesign is the consistent field sizing. So earlier if, if you notice uh, when I went to my defect form all of this information uh, has a lot of field types. So you have a drop down, you have a date field, you have a, a description field, you have a read only field. So all this information uh, was not very good looking on the application. Uh, it, it added to the clutter of how the fields would look like. So what we have done is we have ensured that all the fields are now uh, in line and have a consistent field size irrespective of the type of data which is being shown in it. So that's the next big change. One uh, thing which you will also notice is uh, the mandatory fields which uh, were highlighted with uh, uh, asterisk signs earlier. Now instead of the, that, what you will notice is uh, the focus is on the input field so that the end user knows that if he's missing out on any of the mandatory fields, he will see it in the uh, bottom border as you can see for the state identifier field or uh, the priority or the name field. So the label has been made bold and the input field has a thick bottom border that uh, which is uh, very different from a normal input field which is an optional field. So uh, while entering information on the e-form one can easily identify which are uh, the fields which are uh, required uh, to make uh, changes to this e-form. Uh, Apart from this consistent field sizing and mandatory fields, uh, the overall uh, spacing of the listing view has also been improved. So the similar way you will see that if I'm going to a listing view, uh, you had a lot of information being shown. Uh, uh, the sizes of the row have been increased so that it's much readable in the new UI and uh, the fonts have been changed so that it uh, works well on all types of browsers. So that's also one thing which we have done. It's not just for the detail view, but the listing views will also be much easier to read through. Uh, of course, if you have uh, started using a, a new version, you will notice that you have a column uh, filter available, which wasn't the case earlier, uh, where you could easily uh, sort or uh, filter upon the values uh, which are available in the column. So I can do a column level filtering and the rest of the standard operations uh, remain as uh, they were earlier. So uh, ability to move around fields uh, from uh, the way uh, they were arranged as per the table view, uh, you can easily drag and drop and things like that. Uh, all these minor changes uh, are done to ensure that all the interactions the daily interactions which the end user has are uh, very good. So at the end of the day, uh, when you are using the application, you will uh, feel that there is a lot of consistency in the way the fields are shown in all types of listing views and details view. Uh, another major change which you would uh, have noticed by now is that the top navigation bar has completely changed. 
So what we have done is that uh, we have created kind of a masthead so that the navigation is much more cleaner and simpler. So instead of cluttering the UI with all the tabs which, uh, which the user may have access to, what we have done is we have docked them under the hamburger menu at the center. So if you are having access to other workspaces or uh, wanting to uh, select any of the recently accessed projects or uh, view all the projects in which you are assigned or all the standard options which are available for the help, all that is under the main hamburger menu. So navigation uh, becomes really easy. You just have to hover over the icon and all the options will be instantly available. Uh, whereas all these options were occupying space on the uh, UI and unnecessarily uh, adding to the clutter of the application. So uh, the user doesn't get distracted uh, with all the information which, which has been shown to him. Uh, at the same time, we have added few things uh, to make, uh, make it simpler for uh, navigating across pages as well. So inbox is something which an end user will uh, always want to uh, see at the time he is logging in uh, for the first time of the day. So uh, we have a home icon right here. So that will take him to the new home page. I'll be talking about the new home page in a while. So uh, that will take him to the new inbox. Uh, we have added a shortcut for viewing your organization level dashboard. So if you are one of the uh, senior management people who are wanting to access the org dashboard earlier, one would have to navigate to organization workspace, then select the relevant menu and then dashboard. So that has been uh, uh, made easy for such users who really are uh, not uh, working on a daily basis for uh, the transactions uh, happening on a daily basis, but just wanting to get a glimpse of all the important things uh, happening at the organization level. So the organi uh, organization dashboard uh, shortcut has been added. Of course, it will be available only to the users who have access to the org dashboard. So that is uh, also there on the top navigation. Uh, my search bar is also there. So it works uh, pretty seamlessly the way it worked earlier. You can search through work items. If you are in the organization workspace, you can look through all the uh, items which are uh, there for which you have access to. And if you are uh, searching in a project level workspace, you will uh, only search across the project scope. So that uh, remains as is and uh, at the top. Uh, the broadcast message uh, which was there as a marquee uh, item which would scroll across to show you the message. Uh, this again uh, was a dated uh, way of showing uh, the latest information or any updates that the uh, user should be knowing of. So we have completely changed that. What we have done is uh, you have an icon uh, which, uh, which clearly indicates that there is a new announcement and that needs to be read. So the icon changes the moment the user sit, uh, clicks on it and you can look at the broadcast message here. So um, you can also introduce a, a link, a hyperlink so that you, if you want to uh, redirect the user to some of uh, the other pages. So in this case, I have added uh, for Swift PLM to product webinar. So in that case, you will uh, see the link here as well. So you can co configure your broadcast message to show some these kind of broadcast messages. It will remain there as long as you have a broadcast message to look at. Uh, another feature which uh, you uh, you may have started using is the favorites. So if you have uh, added any favorite, uh, in this case I have just marked my change request listing as my favorites. So if I am in uh, uh, any other context of the application, uh, maybe I'm on another page, uh, navigating to my favorite page would be easy. I'll just need to select on my uh, favorites icon and it will show me the latest uh, favorite which I've added at the bottom. Uh, I also have the option to rename it so I can say, in this case I'll just say my change request and I can rename it to that. And if I want to remove it, I can remove it here as well. So. Adding and removing is possible from the individual page itself, but at the same time, if you want to remove it while you're looking at all the favorites, you could do that uh, as well from here. And uh, last but not the least, what you would also do, uh, get is notifications. So notifications, every time you are routing or rejecting a work item, 
from your home page you will get these kind of notifications if you are uh, chatting with uh, one of your teammates uh, the chat notifications will also show up here as part of the notifications bar so the bell icon will clearly indicate how many hundred notifications you have and you can then look through it or navigate to the individual item to see what uh, what uh, update is there for you so that's uh, that's what we have as part of the navigational changes and the new uh, UI across the application. I'm sure uh, you would notice that this would be much easier to use and to work on. So moving on. So now I'll talk about uh, our new homepage. So uh, the intent behind the new homepage was we always had the inbox, uh, but the inbox didn't uh, do much for the end user wherein uh, it would help them focus on the important items, it will help, help them uh, understand quickly which are the items which are still uh, due for them or about to get, uh, 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 need to be completed in the coming days. So those kind of indications were not possible. Uh, it was uh, pretty much uh, like a, a e-form listing uh, in the older version of the UI. So if I just show you the older version of the inbox which we had. So this was the inbox uh, which you would uh, get. Uh, it's uh, basically a list of all the work items uh, which are assigned to you and uh, really not doing much to uh, educate the user on what kind of work items need his attention on priority. So what, what we have done is we have uh, changed the way uh, the end user focuses on this work item. So we have introduced a new home page as part of the new UI version. So this is how it would look like. Uh, the first time the user logs in, he would, he would be uh, taken to the home page or you can set this as his landing page via his personal preferences. Uh, you will notice that your home page will uh, be uh, something which uh, will not have as much information again like you had earlier. So even if you had tons of uh, items that you need to work on, we have ensured that uh, only the items uh, which are important to them should be coming on top. So one of the ways the end user can do that is that he looks at the work items and start filling the items which are really important to him. So what we have done is we have given an option to pin uh, any of the work items, the moment you pin a work item, it will always remain on top of your list. So that's how uh, you, you can start prioritizing. Uh, by default, all the work items will uh, always be uh, ordered based on when they were assigned to you. So the latest item will always be seen on the top. But uh, like you are seeing here, if in case you have uh, pinned any of the work items already, they will uh, be the topmost uh, items on your inbox. So that's uh, how the new uh, inbox looks like. Uh, like I said, the emphasis was to ensure that the end user looks at the most important items and then moves on to the lesser important items. So uh, we have gotten rid of the list view. Uh, what we have done is uh, we have uh, ensured that there are only three or four work items which are being shown to the end user at any given point of time so that it improves his readability of the work item and what needs to be done. So uh, first off, uh, although this is like a list, uh, he gets to see a lot more information uh, while he's on the home page. So uh, right away you, you will see the name of the work item and uh, below it you will see the ID of the work item along with the project it belongs to and the current workflow stage the work item is in currently. So all this information is there along with uh, the most recent comment uh, on the item. So he gets to know why this work item was routed to him or maybe rejected to him without actually navigating inside the work item which he had to do in the earlier version. So uh, that's uh, the, uh, the work item details which are shown uh, to him upfront. Apart from that, we have introduced some indicators to help him gauge or uh, quickly understand uh, what is the priority, what is the progress and 
whether this is a past due item or not. So uh, the icons next to the name will indicate whether this is a fresh item which is still uh, not pa its past due date. And if it is already past its due date, it will show up with an icon like this. So you can instantly uh, know that this is an item which is beyond the due date and needs to be seen on priority. Uh, then we have the indicator icon here. So the inner circle uh, which you are looking at right here, which is in red color in this case, it, it is indicating the priority of the work item. So the critical high, medium, low will be shown as uh, red, blue, uh, green and gray uh, in this indicator icon. So all these are uh, uh, ways to help him highlight visually instead of making the end user read through uh, uh, all the columns and all the fields to help him understand what really is important. So when the user is scrolling through his inbox, he would instantly know the, which are the critical items without having to read through uh, all of this uh, information. So priority is something which is seen up front. Uh, the outer circle is going to indicate the workflow progress or the percentage complete of your task. So if you, uh, so in this case, let's say this is in the assignment stage. So this is pretty much in the first or the second stage of uh, the workflow of the defect. So that's why you uh, see a, a progress icon just uh, filled for 10% uh, of the entire circle. So assuming you have other work items, so in this case, I have a test event in my inbox. Now this has 50% uh, of the workflow stages have been routed through. So that's why you are seeing a half percentage uh, complete uh, progress on it. So that's how you will uh, look at the workflow progress. Again, uh, the emphasis is not to read information, but visually uh, show this information so that it's easily interpretable and quickly uh, seen by the end user. Uh, what you may have noticed by now is you have some additional hover information also. So, so like I said, this is a work item which is past its due date. So whenever I hover over my progress icon, uh, it will show me the number of days it has been passed due. So in this case, uh, it has been passed since the four days and it was assigned to me on the 26th and uh, it was due on the 24th. So similarly, you will have uh, information shown for other work items as well. So again, you get to know whether a work item is past its due date or is about to be, uh, uh, needs to be completed based on the information shown on the board. Uh, another thing which you can look at while you are uh, looking at this information of hover. So on hover of the work item, you will get to uh, see the number of comments or the number of uh, attachments which have been added on the work item. So if I had added a few comments or attachments uh, in the uh, past one hour, it would have shown up here uh, instantly because again, I don't have to navigate inside my uh, work item details to know if there has been any activity like a new comment or a new attachment which probably I was waiting for. So that pieces of information are shown on Hover. Uh, all this, uh, this kind of information will definitely help the end user not navigate through multiple pages and then know what needs to be done. So that's uh, one of the uh, key areas where we have said that, okay, this is how the new inbox should look like and uh, uh, hopefully assist the users. So we also understand that uh, one would want to have the capability to filter through and sort uh, sort through all the work items which are assigned to them. So for the users who are having a lot of uh, inbox work items, what we have done is we have introduced a filtering panel at the top. So uh, there are uh, multiple ways you can uh, do that. So right now what I've done is I've grouped all my inbox items based on the work item type. So I have six tasks and an action item, five effects and three test events uh, on my uh, inbox. Uh, if I am someone who is working on tickets which have a due date or working on tasks which have a planned finish date uh, more often, then probably I will switch to the due date uh, grouping because that will tell me how many items are due today, how many are due in this week and how many are already past due and if in case I have any other work items which do not have a due date on them, they will group, uh, will be shown under the others group. So I can group all these work items based on priority 
uh, as you will notice, uh, my grouping is changing instantly as I make these selections. So I can uh, group it based on my project, I can group it based on my workflow queue. So if you are one of the key approvers or key assigners for your team, where uh, you just need to route the work item to the relevant uh, team member uh, in time. So you should always have a, uh, the queue grouping enabled so that you know uh, how many are pending for the, uh, for you to be assigned on the next workflow stage or just need your approval to get it done with. So all this uh, will uh, quickly help you understand what uh, work items you need to uh, look into uh, on priority. So uh, so as you notice, uh, none of the work items uh, in the below panel are changing. What is changing is just the count of the work items on the top panel. Uh, if I say I want to just look at this based on say priority, uh, I'll change this. And if I just want to look at the items which are high priority or say only the critical, I just want to look at the critical work items, uh, it will show me the critical items like in this case that this test event and other pinned items which I have said that are really important. I should not lose visibility of these work items while I am on my inbox. So it will always show you the pinned items plus whatever items you have filtered on by clicking the group. So this is how uh, I can go about filtering the items in my inbox once I have changed my grouping. If you are having one of uh, the group types which are having a lot of projects or a lot of workflow queues, you can go ahead and choose a specific project or specific uh, value from the list of values. So here what you could do is, so let's say in this case uh, there are multiple workflow uh, or work item types which are there assigned to me. I can select that I do not want to look at any test events right now and I'll say apply. So that will get grouped under my others bucket and what will be shown to me are tasks, defects and action items always. So I'll continue to uh, look at the task in this manner. So I'll just pause for a moment uh, right now. <coughs> Okay, sorry for that. Uh, I'll continue uh, showcasing the inbox. Uh, so what we have looked at so far is how the list of work items are shown uh, and how you can go about grouping and sorting all the work items in your inbox. Uh, one of the key options which are also available to enable collaboration with your team members uh, is the chat option. So against all the work items which are there, you can have a quick chat with your team members. So let me switch to the server which has the chat enabled for me. So if you are on a work item, so let's say this is one of the uh, tickets which were assigned to me and I want to have a quick chat with the team members which are assigned on the workflow stage. What I'll do is click on the chat icon and uh, type in my message. So this will come up as a notification uh, under the bell icon uh, for Naresh right now, he, he will get a notification to see uh, that I have uh, pinged him. Uh, what what this does, as you must have noticed, is that you would you would see the name and the important information about the work item right on top. So what we are doing here is a chat in the context of the work item. So usually what what happens is you are uh, working uh, on some work item and you want to ping uh, one of your team members about it and talk to uh, talk to him about it. So you have to uh, set up context that you are referring to a specific defect in a specific project and uh, give more details basically to set the context of what you are wanting to discuss. But here when you are uh, chatting via this uh, option, uh, all that context is automatically set for the user and he can simply just uh, click on the chat icon and start uh, chatting with his uh, workflow members. So by default what happens is uh, any of the 
work items uh, which are uh, having this chat icon uh, the workflow members themselves are uh, seen uh, by default but if you want to say add other team members uh, who are not part of the workflow you could do that as well you could do that by clicking on the invite members icon and you will look at all the team members who are part of the project you can add any of them so uh, let's say I added Prathamesh he doesn't seem to be online right now so he will show up with uh, with a great background and uh, I'll start chatting and adding messages so uh, if in case I am talking to Naresh and I feel that there's something important that I also should be tracking on my uh, work item what I would do is I add, start my chat message with a hash so whenever I do that it gets automatically added as a comment so let me type in uh, the message so whenever I do that uh, as you must have noticed my comment changed uh, instantly and it will start showing up uh, as my latest comment on the inbox as well. In a similar way, uh, I can also uh, share a file. Uh, so, so all the com all the chat messages which you have added uh, as a comment that will be shown under marked as comment. And similarly, any of the files which you are uploading via the chat that will also show up uh, on the work item. So what uh, I do now is uh, simply add a file. So, say, so I've added a file and what you would notice is if I go to the details view of the work item that attachment uh, would have uh, gotten added as well. So this was the file I had just uh, shared on chat and that gets automatically added on the work item as well. So uh, that's uh, how easy it is for someone to add a comment via the chat or add a file on the work item via the chat feature. Uh, in a similar way, what you could also do is you can have uh, multiple chats going on with uh, different uh, team members uh, by clicking on this chat icon. So that's how uh, the overall uh, chat enables team members to have a quick conversation without having to set up a lot of context and also ensuring that uh, the most, most important details uh, of the chat get recorded against the work item without having to do any additional steps. So uh, that's uh, that's the chat feature uh, which is part of the home page. I'll move on and show you the rest of the features which are still uh, you can perform via the home page. So uh, one thing which you can uh, keep doing in all your work items is clock time. So for that one had to navigate to the timesheet entry screen and uh, fill up time. So Again, we wanted to save uh, the number of steps done to do that. So what we have done is we have, uh, apart from all the other uh, time entry features, you, you see a time entry feature here as well. So all the important actions which you would want to perform uh, quickly on a work item that are available as inline operations for that work item. Once you click on the name, you will see the comments, route, reject, traceability, share, time entry and view details icon. So all this can be done via the inbox without actually having to navigate across all of screens. So uh, if you are, this is the work item which was routed to you for the first time, you click on the view details icon and you get to see all the details uh, along with the fields and segments. So you get to uh, work on the work item uh, right here while you are in the inbox. At the same time, if you are just wanting to do a quick time entry, you could do that. I can fill in time for the current day and save changes or if I have missed adding time uh, for one of my previous interactions that also can be done uh, 
so I can do it for one of my uh, previous weeks as well. So whenever I complete an operation, what would also happen is that you will get an instant uh, notification saying that the operation was completed successfully. The timesheet says successfully will be shown and uh, like it so happened that if, in case there is an error, that will also show up uh, on the messages icon. So this uh, remain for about two to three seconds and then uh, they get uh, closed. So adding comments is also easy. Uh, you just click on the add comment icon. Um, So looking at my previous comment which was uh, added by Bhavesh here, so I can uh, add as a comment and again the most latest comment will show up on the top. Uh, if it is a work item that I need to route to one of my workflow members, I can do that from here. All the default members will be available for selection. If you have more than the ones which you are seeing here, you can click on the icon here and you can select the uh, from the remaining team members. Uh, so even if I'm doing a route or reject from this case, uh, like I said, if there's anything mandatory, uh, that will be shown with the bottom uh, underline here. So this is an operation uh, which requires a comment to get completed. So I'll add a comment and it will get uh, routed instantly. So the work item got routed and uh, since it got uh, routed, uh, it no longer remains uh, to show me the route or the reject operations. But since I had pinned this work item to my inbox, it will continue to be here. And if I want to keep looking at any of the updates which are happening, I can do that by going to the view details. So even though the workflow item is not in my inbox, it continues to stay there uh, since I had pinned it. And the other non-relevant uh, inline operations get, uh, get hidden. So that's how one can uh, make use of all these operations. One of the important uh, ways you can also collaborate with your team members is via the share icon. So uh, sharing is uh, essentially pinning this work item in your subordinates or peers inbox uh, so that he gets to know that there's something that requires his attention. So in this case, whenever I click on the share icon, I can select a team member. Uh, if I'm wanting to push this work item uh, to his inbox uh, for his attention, I can do that by uh, selecting the pin icon. Or if I want to invite and say that if you have time, probably you can look into this work item and give your views on it. You can do that by clicking on the invite option. So whenever uh, such a work item gets shared, uh, again, you will receive a notification uh, and if you're logged into the application, uh, you will see a notification something like this uh, show up. So uh, this was an work item which was uh, select, uh, shared as an optional work item and not as a pinned work item. So it's uh, giving me an option to accept or reject. I'll accept in this case. So the review prototype work item now starts showing up in my inbox with a green uh, pin on top of it. Uh, Similarly, uh, this training completion sign-off was a work item which was pinned by uh, one of my team members or my managers and so it got automatically got added in my inbox and it will show up with the orange color here. So this is the way you can distinguish between the items which you have pinned yourself uh, which match the theme color and uh, the other items which were pinned by others. So. All this uh, will definitely help you organize your inbox and look uh, at the work items which are really important and need your attention. So uh, that's how the new home page works. So we looked at uh, how the work items assigned to you uh, are shown up in the new chat uh, along with pinning in the indicators and details are options. You also have the ability to group and filter work items based on the important uh, groupings that you have provided. 
and you can uh, perform all the inline operations like time tracking, adding a comment, route or reject, uh, or viewing the details of the work item without having to navigate to the uh, individual uh, screens. So to move on, uh, I'll now showcase the new uh, dashboard which we have. Now uh, the dashboard again was uh, something which uh, we felt uh, required a lot of overhaul. So let me just uh, open up the old dashboard. So this is how the old dashboard looked like. It uh, basically uh, had a two column or a three column layout where individual widgets uh, had to be resized and kept uh, as per uh, each of the uh, metrics which are being seen under it. Uh, again, you could, uh, something which you might have noticed is there's a lot of uh, clutter through which the end user has to sift through and look through and decide what is the uh, important pieces of information that he needs to understand from it. Uh, and also, I mean, in this case, if you have a lot of legends on top, it basically used to take uh, take up a lot of space of the chart area itself. So that again uh, was some, one of the recurring problems of uh, the old dashboard. So what we have done is uh, we have again uh, done a major overhaul of the dashboard. So when you navigate to the monitor and dashboard view, what you look at is a very clean and new interface uh, of the dashboard. Uh, unlike earlier where you had to tap through all the pages of the application, uh, all the dashboard pages to view the individual uh, metrics which you have plotted inside them. Here you would get to see uh, all the pages up front. So you don't have to tap through it. What you're looking at are, uh, in this case, the review effectiveness, uh, project health, ED analytics, defect analytics, and uh, rework effort and testing status as uh, the new dashboard. So let me just uh, reload this in full screen mode. Okay. So, uh, Here's how uh, the dashboard has changed. So like I said, you don't have to sit through all the pages. The pages become uh, as the index itself. So what we have done is we have uh, introduced a new dashboard landing page. All these are pages. And what you're seeing as the widgets are the first widget which has been added inside those pages. So whatever is the first or the top left widget inside that page, that becomes the cover page widget. So in this case, I have a re I have a review effectiveness space wise uh, widget uh, plotted inside my page, and that will show up automatically here as the uh, cover page uh, widget. So similarly, you can uh, go through all the pages. Uh, what we have done is uh, we understand you could have a lot of pages and a lot of metrics uh, added inside those pages. So we have given a thumbnail kind of a navigation panel where instead of using the typical scroll where you really uh, are not sure which widget you are looking for, uh, here what we have done is we have given a representation of the dashboard itself, all the widgets, and whenever you do a mouse over, you will get to see the name of the page, and if you want to jump to that uh, page, you simply click on it, and it will automatically scroll and show you that relevant page. So uh, navigation, uh, has been changed drastically in the dashboard because you understand you want to quickly jump through important things while you are on the dashboard. So that's why you see the new thumbnail navigation on the left hand side. So uh, like I said, these are all pages and the first widget plotted inside that page uh, is uh, being shown up front. It also shows you which are the widgets, uh, how many more widgets are plotted inside that page. So if you double click on the page name, you will get to uh, see the individual widgets in that, inside that page. Here too, you will have the thumbnail navigation. So based on the way the widgets have been arranged uh, inside uh, the page, you will get to see the thumbnail navigation along with the name of the widget. So jumping to uh, individual uh, respective widgets will also be uh, easier uh, in, while you are inside the page. Uh, also navigating across pages uh, has also been simplified so uh, so you have a way to select sorry for that so one second. 
So while you are inside the page, you can jump to uh, uh, other pages by selecting from this drop down. Uh, you could also jump to uh, the previous page you were looking at by selecting the back icon. So if you had jumped, uh, let's say I had gone to review effectiveness, then I had uh, seen the project help, and then I had seen EV analytics, you can uh, use this back button to go back to the previous page you were viewing. So it will remember the order of the navigation. And if you're uh, just wanting to navigate back to the dashboard landing page, you could do that by clicking on this uh, home icon as well. So it will bring back, uh, bring you back to the dashboard uh, home page as well. So uh, that's how the page uh, navigation and page structure has changed as part of uh, the new dashboard. Uh, one important thing which you ha uh, may have noticed is we have also changed the way the widgets are being sized. So earlier one had to uh, basically drag uh, and resize the individual components. But uh, as part of this revamp dashboard, what we have done is we realized that the emphasis should be on uh, not the making the user read through a lot of information or tables, but to make him uh, look at the visual and uh, quickly make that uh, important inference. So uh, keeping that in mind, what we have done is we have uh, ensured that all the widgets are going to, uh, going to have a square size and we have given four sizes in which the widgets can be seen. So uh, the smallest widget will show up with uh, only the graph or the table and you will notice that it doesn't have the axis shown up front. So this is something which where you uh, quickly want to uh, know whether things are going in the right manner or not. So a uh, classic example for that would be this where uh, I have uh, created a gauge icon for my uh, prevention cost in this case and for that I don't require my dashboard widget to have a bigger size because this itself indicates whether this is, there's something that I need to work on or not. So uh, for these kind of widgets, you can use the uh, smallest size which is available here. Uh, and for bigger sizes, uh, as you can see here, you will see it with a graph uh, on having the X and Y axis as well as the individual axis labels. And uh, if you increase the size further, you will see it with uh, all the information along with the legend. So like I uh, had said, if you had a lot of uh, information to be shown in the legend uh, that used to uh, take up a lot of space. Now we have docked all the legends inside a separate legends icon. So you can choose to see the legends whenever you need. And if it is something which you want to keep in your view always when you're looking at this component, you can choose to pin that legend as well. So that's how uh, the new sizes uh, have been provided. Uh, you have uh, three sizes essentially to look at any of your components and along with that we have given a fourth size which helps you see uh, the chart as well as the tabular information in its full glory. So here you will get to see uh, not only uh, the charts uh, along uh, but also the uh, table which is uh, feeding all this information to it. Uh, while in the earlier sizes, one could only toggle uh, between the chart and table view. They will never be seen together, uh, but it's in this carousal view that you will get to uh, see a board together. And since it's a carousal view, you have the benefit of uh, navigating through all the widgets by simply using the arrow uh, icons or the key arrow keyboard icons to go through all the widgets which you have plotted in this uh, dashboard. So that's how you can uh, look at all the widgets uh, in the full carousal view. Uh, like I said, one of the biggest changes which uh, you would notice as part of the rebound dashboard is that now instead of having to resize individual widgets based on the data, we have standardized the widget sizes to these three sizes. And if you are wanting to look at the table and chart together, 
then uh, we recommend you use the carousal view uh, which shows both and also gives you the flexibility of viewing other widgets in similar manner. So uh, the rest of the uh, widgets and the page uh, interactions uh, remain pretty much the same. Um, all the standard operations of help, uh, settings, uh, refresh, uh, invert access, the new toggle for chart and table, delete icon and export. All these options uh, remain the way they were provided earlier. Uh, one of the uh, uh, changes which also you will notice is how you can uh, reorganize the widgets on the page. So if you have a lot of widgets which you are wanting to resize, you could do that or sort uh, uh, by this option. So if I want to uh, sort all these widgets based on my uh, on the sizes which I have uh, configured them to so it will get sorted as for that so the smallest sizes uh, first and then uh, to the largest sizes or I could invert that to say exercise widgets and then the smallest size widgets so depending on that my left navigation uh, continues to change and uh, if I want to resize all the widgets to a same size let's say I want all of them to be M size I select that and it all becomes the same size widget. So here you get to see all the widgets uh, in the same panel. Uh, obviously, like I said, uh, use this with the intent where you are not wanting to do a lot of data drill down and see a lot of information together. Uh, you should be having uh, easy to interpret widgets uh, in this size so that uh, you can uh, see, even if you need more information, you can do a hover over them and look at the necessary information. Otherwise, uh, you can go about selecting uh, bigger widget sizes to see more information. So the org level dashboard is also uh, pretty much uh, changed in similar manner. You will have the org level dashboard landing page which will be the index of all the pages. Uh, Adding of pages uh, or adding of widgets uh, has been improved in one sense wherein if you click on the add widget earlier if you add a list of widgets uh, configured for you to add them they would all show up and you had to read through it. So what we have done is uh, depending upon the groups under which uh, you have uh, grouped them you could uh, jump to the individual uh, analytics group or you can uh, simply type in the name to quickly find the relevant widget and add them. So whenever you drag and drop it will get added on top uh, left corner automatically and then you can uh, move it to the re relevant position which you need uh, on the dashboard page. Uh, so like I said uh, the rest of the features pretty much remain the same uh, but have been uh, revamped as per the new UI so you will get to see uh, the project filter, the security icons and uh, sorting of widgets uh, or resizing of all the widgets is also available. Uh, if, uh, I mean we all understand that this is a new dashboard design altogether so it will take time for uh, end users to get used to and you would want to do a probably a beta uh, in a closed environment and see how people are reacting to it and using it. So what we have done is uh, we have given an option to uh, select some of the standard sizes. So if you are not uh, comfortable with the sizes which we have provided, so basically your medium size widget would be a 4 by 4, a large a 6 by 6 and an exercise would be a 9 by 9 kind of a widget. Uh, we have provided other options which will help you understand whether this kind of widget sizing will help or not. Uh, so you can do that uh, whenever you select my widget size will uh, change accordingly. And once you have made the selection, it will prompt you that the this is the selected size and once you change it, it will change it across all the dashboards uh, in the application, across the organization, across all the projects. So uh, this is just to assist the initial rollout of the dashboard in your organization. If you are wanting to choose from uh, one of these uh, other options of dashboard sizes or widget sizes to be precise, uh, you could do that by this option at the org level. So right now this option is only available to the org administrator so that uh, any changes done to this uh, uh, are 
taken mindfully uh, to as they will impact the rest of the application overall. So that's how the new dashboard uh, has been revamped. So let me just quickly go through all the features which we looked at. So we looked at uh, how the dashboard pages are uh, arranged as the index uh, right at the start and it's very easy to navigate across all the pages. Uh, rearranging the widgets or rearranging the pages or adding, deleting the pages is pretty much the same. You could do that even in the new dashboard. So uh, when you are on the da dashboard, you could rearrange uh, your pages. You could do that by selecting the name of the page and you can rearrange uh, as per the need. So all that is possible on the new dashboard. Uh, navigating uh, across pages is also very simple. You can do that across uh, various options which we have provided. Looking at all the operations which are available at the off level, uh, standard sizes, uh, the other options uh, for dimension of the standard widgets. And uh, like I said, I mean the main, main changes are that you no longer will be able to see grid and the graphical queue together. You can toggle between the two and if you want to see both of them together, you will see that in the carousal view. That's the number one uh, big change you would notice as an end user of the dashboard. The second big change is obviously the standard widget sizing. So uh, you have the option to choose from those three standard widget sizes or the carousal size which you have. Um, obviously all this has been possible only uh, because we uh, have done major enhancements in the way the dashboard has been built. We have taken upon a new dashboard uh, charting library, the D3, and we have done a ton of uh, CSS enhancements to ensure that the new dashboards or the new chart types look much better. We have provided grid lines in the background and provided much more uniformity across all the markers which are being shown in the dashboard. So good amount of uh, thought and time has been uh, spent uh, behind developing uh, the dashboard to make it more uh, readable and a richer experience for the power uh, power users who are uh, going to rely on the dashboard to make all the important uh, decisions. Uh, one quick important note, like I said, uh, since this is a drastic change from what you had earlier, so the migration impact would be that uh, if you are having a single column layout, all your widgets will get resized to extra large size widget. Uh, similarly, for two column layout, they will become large, and three column layout, you will see them as medium size widgets. Uh, that being said, uh, keeping in mind that we want to provide a more visually richer experience for our dashboard users, so the precedence has been given to the chart view over the table view, uh, even in the migration uh, strategy. So if you have widgets configured with chart and table view uh, or only chart, so they will come up with the chart view by default because you can only see one at a time. And if you have only table configured as part of your widget, then the table will be shown uh, even upon upgrade. Uh, apart from that migration pack, a few uh, nitty gritties uh, and limitations. Uh, uh, there were some redundant features uh, which were uh, not, not required in the new dashboard, so we have gotten rid of them. And there are uh, minor limitations or technical limitations uh, which you need to keep in mind while using the dashboard. So with that, uh, I'll switch to the new mobile app which we have uh, for the application. The way this would work is I will get to see the same home page on my mobile app. and I get to perform all the inline operations the way they were available on the web application. I can choose to load all the work items which are assigned to me and view them. Uh, of course, view details option is not available on the mobile app yet and uh, addition of attachments while the mobile app is still in the works. So. Uh, while this uh, that has been uh, done, you can still 
will start using a mobile app and start performing some of the important operations or uh, basically get notified of any of the important things even if you are not uh, in front of your laptop. So all the important notifications uh, show up just like they were showing up on the home page. In fact, you can go about chatting in the same manner which you had done via the home page. So all those operations are there to help get things done quickly while you are on mobile. So with that, I think uh, we are done with what we wanted uh, to cover today.